because we're in Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, third chapter, 24th verse. It says, For many are deceived by their own vain or worthless opinion, and an evil suspicion hath overthrown their judgment. You see? An evil suspicion overthrown their judgment. But you deceive by your own worthless opinion, the way you think. That's what he's saying. What well, you think is worthless. You don't have no merit. It's very important, y'all. Go back to uh, 2 Exodus 14. And 14 and 14. Let go from the immortal thoughts. Cast away the burden of man. Put off now the weak nature. You say put off now the weak nature. You know, you got to be strong, y'all. Y'all got to, like men, ain't no way feeling a man going to the kingdom. And women that think that a man's supposed to be like you, ain't, they ain't going to the kingdom. They, they, if you convert them to be like you, they ain't going to the kingdom either. That's infeminine. You got to be men. And roll like men. It says, verse 15, and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy in the deep. That's why I say you supposed to be, some things are unnecessary matters. You have no reason to be nosy and thinking that you're supposed to be knowing about. It says, And haste thee to flee from these times. Say, so hope that you can flee from these times. For yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter. He said, hey, say, hey, man, hey, Ezra's. Man, hope to be getting up out of here, man, because it's more evils that we see in our time. That's this the hereafter. In our time, we see all these evils that's happening in the earth right now. And has been happening after Ezra, you know, rested. He said more evils been done, going to be done in the future. You know what he said? For, great, for yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter. For look how much the world shall be weaker through age. So much the more shall evils increase upon them that dwell therein. You know? So much the more that evils shall be Weak, excuse me, increased upon them that dwell therein. As we see all the evils that's done in this earth now, worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. And the most I destroyed those cities. For the truth is fled far away. Hear that? The laws of the most is fled far away. And leasing is hard at hand. But now hastes the vision to come which thou hast seen. Then I said I before thee and said, Behold, Master, I will go as thou hast commanded me and reprove the people which are present. Remember, you got to reprove the people. As we read previously. He said, I'm going to go and reprove the people that are present. That's why people don't understand they're being reproved for the betterment of themselves. But they that shall be born afterward, mean us, born in the time that we live in, who shall admonish them? Who's going to admonish them? Thus the world is set in darkness. Hear that? Thus the world is set in darkness. That's why Moshe said, the light is coming into the world and the people comprehend it not. They love darkness more than they love the light. He was the light. You know what he said? Because he's not in the earth yet. During the time that Ezra was speaking of these words. He says, Thus the world is set in darkness. And they that dwell therein are without light. You see? That's why I said, what's the light? You know the light is the law, right? Remember what it said? Verse 18, for the truth, the law of the Most High is fled far away. Now, it's hip talk like the light is 
Well, we said, Proverbs 6.23, you got to keep this in mind what's being said already that's talking to us. The light is the law. The truth is the law of the Most High. says verse 18 for the truth is fled far away at least it is hard at hand but now hastest the vision to come which thou hast seen the law of the most is, is is removed far away he's saying that's why Ezra was given the law back not only that he was given 124 more books than what we have 204 to be exact. Then answered I before thee and said, Behold, Master, I will go as thou hast commanded me and reprove the people which are present. But they that shall be born afterward, like us, who shall admonish them? Thus the world is set in darkness, ignorance, not knowing. And they that dwell therein are without light. That's why Master Kabbalah had to come and say, I'm the light. For thy law is burnt. Hear that? For thy law. Let you know that light, the truth, is still the law. For thy law is burnt. Because remember, uh, when Aunt Jesus came into power, he was burning the Bibles. Look, let me show you. He's prophesying about what's going to happen, man. And what happened with us, you know, in dealing with... Look at uh, 1 Maccabees, 1st chapter, 56 verse. And when they, this is the Greek empire. And when they had rent in pieces the books of the law, which is the Bible, which they found, they burnt them with fire. So called white man, burn them with fire, Antiochus Epiphanes. Burn them up. This is what Ezra's prophesied. Second Ezra 14 and 21. For thy law is burnt, therefore no man knoweth the things that are done of thee, or the works that shall begin. But if I have found grace before thee, send the Holy Spirit into me, and I shall write all that have been done in the world since the beginning, which were written in thy law, in your law. That's why I keep telling y'all, you better not be listening to these Men that are not dealing with this truth. That's telling you that I'm under the most high law. You hear what it's saying? You keep hearing it's the most highest law. So you can't say that you, you're not under the law. That's his law. So you're telling the most high that you ain't got to follow him. It says, as you're telling thy law, your law, most high. That man may find thy path. So how are you going to find the path, the way Oh, the most like, that's why Master Shah said, Path the way. He said, I am the way to show you how to follow the most high or the most high's law that's going to lead to everlasting life. Listen, thy law that men may find thy path and that they which will live in the latter days may live. What do you think? We ain't in the last days? This is for us, that we that's living in the last days may live, meaning you may have that live, that living is talking about having everlasting life. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. Let's go to Tob the book of Tobit, the fourth chapter. Let me go. Uh,
Okay, um, let's go to Tobit, the fourth chapter in the Apocrypha, and we're going to look at um, verse 5 through 17. Tobit 5, no, fourth chapter, verse 5. My son, be mindful of the Most High, our power, all thy days. Be mindful of the Most High, is telling the son, all the days that you live. And let not thy will be set to sin, which is transgression of the Most High's law. You can read about that in 1 John 3 and 4. What sin is, definition of sin. And let not thy will be set to sin. Or to transgress his commandments. Do uprightly all thy life long. And follow not the ways of unrighteousness. Don't follow the ways of the wicked. The evil. Those that are sinners. For if thou deal truly. Thy doing shall prosperously succeed to thee. And to all them that live justly. Give alms of the sub of thy substance. Give alms of thy substance. What you have. And when thou givest alms, let not thine eye be envious. Don't give alms. Give things that you give to people and be envious. Neither turn thy face from any poor. It's very important. The essays were, that's who, that's who my second shot came out of. And you, the apostles and so forth, they were about the poor. And the face of the Most High shall not be burned, or excuse me, turned away from thee. You hear that? Because the Most High turned his face away from us. He said, I'm going to see what your end going to be. If thou hast abundance, Give alms accordingly. You have a lot? Say give alms. Give things to the children of Israel. If thou have abundance, you have a lot, give alms accordingly. If thou have but a little. See, some people have just a little. Some people have a lot. He said give, give according to what you have. And having a lot. He said, you have a little. Be not afraid to give according to that little. Remember, uh, I'm not sure if I gave the example of the woman that gave the two mites. And the ones that uh, had a lot and they gave a lot. Say, so who gave the most? He said, the lady gave her two mites. Because she gave all that she had. I remember I was asking a... Uh, uh, Brothers and sisters, I had like 2,000 friends on Facebook. I said, well, if everybody could give $3, that could take care of the rent. Take care of everything that you'd be dealt with for the school. Shoot, people in school start putting $2 in an envelope. <laughs> like, are you serious? And I remember, the only thing I got from people was a $1.75 from a brother that gave 10% of his um, GR check. Most of the time, man, I seen that brother. That brother was so happy. Most I gave him apartment he said look man he was so say, look he said, oh, I got a car look at you I want you got gotta come and see my car he got a car got his apartment everything and I saved it dollar seventy five cent that's all I got it was a dollar seventy five cent that's why I say you know people not really looking at the scriptures and really operating like he said for prosperity it says <laughs> it says uh so like you I'm I lost my spot. Page turn on. Um, Tobit 4 and 8, it says, If thou have abundance a lot, give alms accordingly. You know? You have a lot, give alms. Give according to what you have. If thou have but a little, be not afraid. 
to give according to that little. Some people have a little. I don't have nothing to give because I ain't got $100. I ain't got $5. I ain't got $10. I ain't got nothing to give. You'll give nothing. That's why I say, if thou have, because you're still in darkness. You don't see this light. He say, and he telling the son this. He say, if thou have but a little, you just got a little bit. Be not afraid to give according to that little. I remember brother reaching his pocket, he was giving out. He gave, you know, I'm looking at this because he gave, he reached in his pocket and all he had was change and pity because I know that, I know his condition. And he was giving all of that. He just picked out, and I know how he get his money at that time. It was like, wow, and everybody else, nobody gave nothing. He just grabbed, man. That's why I said, be not afraid to give according to that little. You didn't mount it up to a few dollars or whatever, a couple of dollars or whatever, but that's what this is. I'm looking at this, fulfilling what it says. For thou layest up a good treasure for thyself against the day of necessity. Do y'all realize all this is going to be about the lack of bread and great tribulation? Lack of food. Don't you see the shells? There's a change that's happening in this world. Y'all looking for it to go back to normal? No, ain't, gonna, no, ain't no normality. Except for the fact that it's going to have to change and you're going to say it's going to be bad as ever then catch you off guard like a thief in the night. Everything changes to be where it's at then bam, he's going to come and catch you like a thief in the night because you're going to be going back to your normal wickedness and the things that you're doing forget about what it is that you've been through you don't take but that much i mean something happened boop we back to back to where we was at before the, all those things happened something happened oh god oh you, you, you'll be afraid of them then but you got to catch you like a thief in the night oh yeah but i'll live up a good treasure for thyself against the day of necessity. The day that you're going to have a need of these things. Your money ain't going to be able to get you out of this necessity that it's talking about. You're going to have to have the spirit of the most high to be rolling with you. To know how to operate in these times. Or you're going to remain in spiritual darkness. Because that alms do deliver from death. And suffer not to come into darkness. You see? He telling you how you can benefit by giving alms. Helping people. Doing the things that's necessary for us as the children of Israel. It said deliver from death. And suffer not to come into darkness. Ignorance. For alms is a good gift unto all that give it in the sight of the Most High. The Most High is going to see you giving. That little or that abundance. Whatever. It don't matter. Beware of all whoredom. He said. He said, beware of all whoredom, my son. And cheaply take a wife of the seed of thy fathers. An Israelite woman, if you're an Israelite. And take not a strange woman to wife. Over and over again, we see this. Nehemiah talked about it. Most I gave us in Deuteronomy 7 and 3. He said, hey, Nehemiah 13, I mean, Ezra's talking about it. Prophet's talking about it. It's what we were told. Not take, remember, Solomon took on strange women. And take not a strange woman to wife, which is not of thy father's tribe, for we are the children of the prophets, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember, my son, that our fathers from the beginning, even that they all marry wives of their own kindred and were blessed in their children. And their seed shall inherit the land. See that? See, now, therefore, I mean, we took women of our own nation. Now, therefore, my son, love thy brethren, which is just important as loving the most high. And despise not in thy heart or the way you think 
thy brethren. Don't despise. Can't be hating on your brothers. That's what he's saying. Because if you hate, the, hate your brothers, you a murderer. Does say the most high. And despise not in thy heart thy brethren, the sons and daughters of thy people, in not taking a wife of them. For in pride is destruction and much trouble. See, that's one thing that we as a people, we cannot be prideful. Most high, that's hateful before the most high and man. Hear what he said? For in pride is destruction and much trouble. So you have to be humble. And in lewdness is decay and great want. For lewdness is the mother of famine. You know that? Lewdness, you all running around here doing all kind of lewd acts. You say you're going you're gonna to be caught in this famine. It's a lack of bread, lack of food. You're going to be caught in that famine. Let not the wages of any man which hath wrought for thee tarry with thee, but give him it out of hand. Give him his money that he worked for in his hand. For if thou serve the most high, he will also repay thee. Be circumspect, my son, in all things that thou doest, and be wise. In all thy conversation, make sure you have a wise conversation. Be circumspect in everything you do. Say, do that to no man which thou hater. You hate certain things you don't do to your brethren. Drink not wine to make thee drunken. Don't be getting drunk. Drink in moderation. Drink not wine to make thee drunken. Neither let drunkenness go with thee in thy journey. Don't be going nowhere drunk. Even Esau got DUIs, right? Driving under the influence. Said, don't be going nowhere on your journey. Told him, don't go nowhere on your journey drunk. Give of thy bread to the hungry. Feed the hungry. The hungry. And of thy garments to them that are naked. Clothe them. Give them clothes to put on. And according to thine abundance, give alms. Give alms. And let not thine eye be envious. You notice he already said that once, right? Most I speak once, yea, twice. Because we got to hear it over and over again. And let not thine eye be envious when thou giveth alms. Say, pour out thy bread on the burial of the just. Make sure that the just are buried properly. But give nothing to the wicked. You know? So don't give. He said, don't give nothing to the wicked. Isaiah 60 and 5. Isaiah 60 and 5. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and mine heart shall fear, because mine shall fear, and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The abundance of the sea, which represent these nations, shall be converted unto us, the children of Israel. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. The force of the Gentiles is going to come unto us. Verse 11. Therefore thy gates shall be opened continually in the kingdom. They shall not be shut day nor night. That men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. And that their kings may be brought. You understand? We're going to be the new IRS. Israelites receiving services. Forever and ever and ever. You say, for the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yeah, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Utterly wasted. 
Verse 14, the sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. All those that afflicted us going to come bending unto us. That put our people in darkness. And all you that love, the fact that they put you in darkness, you got something for you too. This says the sons of, also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. You're going to bow down now. You're going to bow down later. But you're going to bow down to what? The soles of thy feet. The soles of your feet. Those that make it to the kingdom. Most high will it be us. And they shall call thee the city of the most high. The Zion of the holy one of Israel. He said, whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated right now. We forsaken and hated. As a children of Israel, so that no man went through us, thee, ain't nobody going through us. Where are our banks? Where are our corporations at? Humongous. I mean, we got brothers and sisters that make millions and some billionaires. But where is our corporations? Like you got Walmarts and the Macy's and the, uh, all these different corporations that's, you know, selling people all kinds of things, Amazon and so forth. Where is ours at? We don't have it because it's part of the curses. Most I say we don't want to follow him. He said, you're going to put the stranger that is above thee shall, that's within thee shall get above thee. He shall lend to thee. You should be the, the tail. He's going to be the head and so forth. No matter how much money they have, why don't we have corporations that can compete with all the other corporations that's in the world that we see that's all over everywhere because of them curses. You understand? The most I say it's going to happen and he'll use whoever to do it. Make it happen. It's making it happen. He's making it happen. Whereas thou has been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency. Just forever and ever and ever. That's what this is about. Eternal excellency. That means everlasting. Forever and ever and ever. A joy of many generations. You know that? Because there ain't going to be no more tears. There ain't going to be no sadness. There ain't going to be no crying. No more criminals. There ain't going to be nothing but joy. That's what this is about. Regardless of how you look at it, everybody that hear my voice should want to be there with that joy. Or you're going to perish. Revelation 21 and 24. Revelation 21 and 24. Last book before the last book. Revelation 21, 24. And the nations of them which are saved, let you know a remnant of the nations is going to be saved, shall walk in the light of it. The light of New Jerusalem and wherever they be at, coming forth to see the light, walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. You hear that? Like I said, our gates going to be open 24-7 that the forces of the Gentiles be brought to our gates. And the nations of them which are saved, the remnant of the nations that the most High going to save, because somebody got to work, somebody got to do the same things that you're doing now, only it's going to be in a righteous kingdom. That's why I understand how people wouldn't want to be there and really come back to understand what we're bringing forth because at least what I'm bringing for, to know what you got to do as an Israelite that your name could be written in the book of life and those that are of these other nations that's going to be a remnant that's going to be saved, as it's saying, and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. Because there's not going to be any darkness. They're going to have to walk in the light of it we know that light is the commandments of the Most High. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. The kings of the earth going to bring everything that they have and they're from their nation to the gates. You got the people just like right now, the kings of, you got like they had a, a, a strike, I guess, on the ships coming into the harbors here. They had 200,000 ships out there in the ocean. The kings of all these nations that's sending all their goods to America, the same thing is going to be for us in the kingdom. 
the kings of the earth do bring their glory, all their products and so forth. They're working for us in the kingdom and honor into it in a righteous kingdom, though. So you can't understand righteousness if you're so wicked, evil. You're looking at this kingdom. It ain't going to be like this earth. It's going to be a new earth, a new heaven. Look, hold up. Before we go any further, let's, let's go to the uh, last book of Isaiah. Go to Isaiah 6. 6. See, y'all looking at what it is that you're dealing with here? No, ain't no way. Uh, Isaiah 66 and 22. For as the new heavens, hear that? For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, hear that? Read it again. And as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make shall remain before me. That's the most I said. The new heaven and the new earth, earth going to remain before him, said the most high. So shall your seed and your name remain. You see? So now going back to, that's our children that we're going to have. Little one going to have a thousand, strong one going to have a strong nation. Oh, we're going to have a lot of children to populate this bad boy. From all the people that he's going he gonna to wipe out, two-thirds of our people. So we're going to populate the earth. Like, I mean, don't get it twisted. Because Noah, Shem, and Japheth, and their wives, that's eight people. Mainly six people because Noah didn't have any more sons. After Shem, Ham, and Japheth, six people, come. everybody coming from Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and their wives. Come on, I don't take a rocket size to, rock to figure this out. Well, so I don't need a lot of people. He told, look, he told me. Moses, I'm going to kill all of them, all the Israelites. I'm going to kill, he's going to kill all of us. All the Israelites. And I'll raise up a nation after you, Moses. Remember, his ways and thoughts, not our ways and thoughts. You're going to tell the most high he, he didn't do what he's supposed to do? You got that kind of mindset? He can do whatever he want to do. His ways and thoughts, not our ways and thoughts. Then he, John the Baptist came back and said, the most I can raise up some stones to be his people. That's why you can't be all arrogant because you called. You just called. You know, chosen. You just called. We all just called. We ain't chosen till we made it to the kingdom. Hmm. But understand, understand, you don't understand your understand your bowels before the Most High. This name is jealous. Pretty soon, you think because you're an Israelite, you more than the Most High. And my shack, I was you. Hear what he said. And my shack, was like, humble himself. Before the Most High, unto death. He said it pleased the Most High to bruise on my shack that was shy, his only begotten son. Who you think you are? If thou can say. You think he loved you more than he loved his only begotten son? Hmm. But let's go back to the kingdom. I digress. Look, Revelations 21 and 25. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, but there shall be no night there. Ain't gonna be no darkness there. Ain't gonna be no ignorance there. Ain't gonna, it's gonna be light, righteousness. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. They're gonna be working for. The most side of my shake shine the children of Israel. What he says, verse 24, and the nations of them which are saved. He's gonna save a remnant of these nations. And like we read, in those nations that would not serve him, he go, they gonna perish. He's gonna get rid of them. They're gonna throw them in the lake of fire. Straight up. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, but there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. The glory and honor of the nations into, into it. That, the, the ones that he saved are these nations. They're going to be working for the new IRS. Israelites receiving services forever and ever and ever. And there shall be, there, and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defiled it. Ain't no sinners, ain't nobody defiled. 
going into it. Neither whatsoever work of abomination, abomination is just breaking the most high's laws, sins, or make of a lie. There ain't no liars going in it. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. So, if you're not written in the book of, at Lamb's book of life, Revelation 20 and 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Straight up, that's what this is all about. Hopefully you're learning this because you're hearing it. If you ain't written in the book of life, Lamb's book of life, you're going to be cast into the lake of fire. Let's go back to the book of Tobit. And we're going to read uh, from chapter 13. Tobit 13. Verse 1, then Tobit wrote a prayer of rejoicing and said, Blessed be the Most High that liveth. Blessed be the Most High that liveth forever and blessed be his kingdom that we just read about. <laughs> but he does scourge and have mercy. He do scourge when he have mercy. I mean, not getting something you do desire. He lead it down to hell and bring it up again. Neither is there any that can avoid his hand. Remember he said this beautiful thing in uh, Hebrews 10, 31. Fall into the hands of the living power. Fall into his hands. Ain't nobody could deliver out of his hand. Right? That's what my second shot told us too. He told us, look. Go to uh, St. John. The 10th chapter. St. John 10 and... This out of 27. It says, my sheep hear my voice. He the word of the Most High. The Most High have a voice and from the Most High's voice come forth words. And the Most of Shai is the word of the Most High and, the Mo and since he's the word of the Most High his voice is the word of the Most High. He said my sheep. So he have sheep. And he told us in Matthew 15, 24 but he asked and said I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he said my sheep who are the lost 12 tribes of Israel hear my voice. And I know them. He said, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. See? His sheep, who are the 12 tribes of Israel. He said, give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Why? He said, because my father, which gave them me. See, the Most High gave some of you a Mashiach. He said, my father who gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. What did he say? I and my father are one. They agree. He said, ain't nobody able to pluck whoever the Most High has given us to a Mashiach Yavashah. And he's been given the commandment of the Most High to do the choosing. He say nobody will pluck them out of his hand. His sheep. Because the most I who gave them is greater than everything. I mean, anything you could think of. Say, and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Say, and my father agreed. See, he agreed with his father. There's no division amongst them. So now, we're um uh, Back to Tobit, 13th chapter. Verse 2. For he doeth scourge and have mercy, the Most High. He leadeth down to hell and bringeth up again. Neither is there any that can avoid his hand. You see? You can't avoid the hand of the Most High. 
Confess him before the Gentiles. Hear that? Confess him before the Gentiles. Just what we're supposed to be doing. Confessing the Most High before the Gentiles. Ye children of Israel, for he has scattered us among them. So we got to confess him before the Gentiles. That's why. Let's look at something. Um, let's just start about. Um, we got to confess the Most High, y'all, before the Gentiles. Let's go to um, Psalm 100. Just, just a moment. 